Peace out. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hilarious peacemaker deaths. Thanks for coming back, ghost, so I can kill you all over again. For this list, we're looking at the demises from the first season of the spin-off DC show that had us busting a gut. If you haven't seen season one yet, there will be spoilers. What do you think about Peacemaker's philosophy of obtaining peace by killing as many men, women, and children as he needs? Discuss the definition of irony in the comments. Number 10. Tank Shell Grenade Peacemaker gets in a few creative kills in Season 1, from stabbing a guy through the ear to shooting his shield into a butterfly's throat. But even we wouldn't have expected the ingenuity of tying an ordinary grenade to a very unordinary Russian tank shell. Yo, what the hell is that? It's a grenade I tied to a Russian tank shell. Why not just the grenade? The grenade blows up like two people. How many people does this blow up? I don't know. I invented it this morning. What? When our heroes, the 11th Street Kids, infiltrate the factory they suspect to be packaging and distributing the butterfly's food supply, they get a lot of memorable kills in, as we'll see later. But no single kill comes with more of a statement than when Peacemaker simultaneously throws the two aforementioned explosives at a horde of butterflies. That's like, what, 13 butterflies, one stone? Run at a bio would have been appreciated. Really? Number nine, Goff's family. There's some sort of purple things growing out of their mouths. Peacemaker, take them out. Even the kids? Yes, all four beds now. If you have a shot, terminate them immediately. Okay, under normal circumstances, the assassination of an adorable family would never be funny. But such is showrunner James Gunn's wickedly dark sense of humor. Oh, and we should probably mention Peacemaker only deems three-fourths of the butterfly hosts to be adorable. So what, does it just trust us and shoot kids? Come on, man, look how adorable that one is. The other one, not so much. It's got like a children of the corn vibe going on. It should also be noted that the gravity of the situation isn't lost on Peacemaker, who finds himself incapable of taking innocent lives as he grapples with his whatever-it-takes mantra for the first time. Vigilante, on the other hand, has no such qualms, humming to himself as he takes out all but the patriarch Goff before Judo Master interrupts. Susie Bear out. <laughs> and now, Papa Bear out. <laughs> Number eight, the cow. Oh no. If this were a list of the grossest Peacemaker deaths, this one would definitely top the list. Activate human torpedo! Got a boy on now! Oh, Jesus, I told her not to use that one. The end game for the 11th Street kids sees them desperately fight to the sub-level of the farm to take out the butterfly's cow their only food source, in a last-ditch effort to end the invasion. However, once Peacemaker gets down there, he learns the nuance of the butterfly's plan, taking over the Earth in an effort to save it. It's an emotional moment for Peacemaker, whose decision to either embrace or reject his initial philosophy will have world-changing consequences. Maturely choosing the latter, his activation of Adebayo's torpedo helmet undercuts the emotionality in the best way possible. What do you say? Activate human torpedo. What? We'll never look at cows the same way again. Number 7. Augie Smith and the Aryan Empire with an organization name like that, you gotta know some serious comeuppance would be coming your way. And boy, does it ever. No wrong time to rock. After being chased through the forest by his dad, Augie, again donning the white dragon alter ego, Peacemaker is forced to accept the outright evil in his father's soul once and for all. But not before Economist dispatches the rest of the Empire with one sweep of a machine gun. <laughs> In the armor, man. This is again another huge growth moment for Peacemaker, as he's finally able to rid himself of the guilt over his brother's death and kill his childhood tormentor. But it wouldn't be a James Gunn kill if someone like Vigilante didn't make a funny and tactless comment. Dude, this is a really weird time to do your face exercises. 
I mean, I guess you don't get a totally sick, jacked face like yours without dedication, but... He's crying, asshole. Oh. Number six, Annie Sturphausen. Even though the show released the first three episodes all at once, we only needed the first to get hooked on the show's signature comedy, the ending of which gives us the introductory shocking kill. Peacemaker's sexual rendezvous with random bar patron Annie is funny enough, but things take a turn with the advent of some underwear karaoke and a psycho butterfly with 80s rocker chick hair. When she said, I don't Though we don't know the particulars of it yet, the fight in Annie's apartment sets the tone for the rest of the show, as Peacemaker desperately tries to escape what is hands down the weirdest hookup he's ever had. Thankfully, he is able to retrieve his sonic boom helmet, the capabilities of which we marvel at in all its goriness. Activate sonic boom! Number 5. Eagly's Prey Hey, we never said the deaths had to be named characters, or even human. Speaking of the end of Episode 1, Peacemaker's killing of Annie Sturphausen is punctuated brilliantly by Eagly dropping down a morsel of food. You know, for that post-Sonic Boom snack we all need. Thanks, Eagly. This becomes a running gag in a later episode, as the ever-thoughtful Eagle seeks to cheer up Peacemaker with a squirrel this time. Good evening. It's very meaningful to me, but no. No, I'm not gonna eat it. You can have it, though. And finally, season one wraps up with Eagly dropping down another possum. Between Peacemaker, the butterfly, and Ghost Dad, though, we don't think anyone's eating it. Number four, X-ray kills. Activate X-ray vision. As we've already touched upon, Peacemaker's various helmets do a variety of things, including giving everyone scabies for some reason. Why would I want scabies? Challenge yourself. Every man should have scabies once in his life. However, none brings about some comedic deaths quite like the X-ray helmet. You didn't think to give me some sort of signal? Yeah, the signal was I shot her head off. You said you were going to be chill. Do I not look chill to you right now? It proves incredibly useful when the 11th Street kids raid the butterfly factory, as it allows Peacemaker to tell who's a butterfly and who isn't. Unfortunately, he fails to tell at a bio this, leading to a shocking series of kills. Still, even once at a bio's keen to the situation, her uncertainty in the field leads her to shoot people Peacemaker has already killed. You don't have to shoot people after I already killed them. Right. Hey, if this were the zombie apocalypse, Adebayo would get a gold star for remembering to double tap. Number 3. Forest Deaths This time the deaths come from a variety of sources, and we love it for that. After Peacemaker and Vigilante are compromised, they have to flee from the Evergreen Police Department through the woods. I told you not to do that! Look, our worst piece paralyzed! Even though the cops aren't butterflies yet, that doesn't stop Vigilante and Eagly from seemingly taking a few of them out. Yeah, Eagly's hardcore, man. Things take an even more darkly comedic turn, however, when Mern's mole in the department lock executes his own officers, facetiously mocking them before death. No, please. No, please. Don't. No, please. No. Those who stuck through the credits, however, got an extra bonus, as they got to see Locke practice his sad face for when his subordinates arrive. Does this look sad? Hey. <laughs> Number 2. Police Station And this is where the entirety of the EPD goes down. Well, not really, as no one actually dies here, but seeing as being taken over by a butterfly is basically a death sentence, we're including it anyway. Plus, how can we not when it's so perfectly set to the rock banger monster by the band Reckless Love? <laughs> Coupled with the slow motion of the scene, the mere imagery of the butterflies swarming the station and taking over officers and inmates alike is sheer lunacy, and we love it. 
And the icing on the cake comes as the butterfly army hilariously fails to replicate human smiling while setting out for world domination. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Charlie the Gorilla Yep, we told you animals were fair game. You're not bringing that. Hey, I agree with Peacemaker. We can't go in there unprepared. We don't even know that there are butterflies in there. Oh, come on, please. Prior to the sacking of the factory, Vigilante mounts up with a chainsaw. Harcourt doesn't let him take it, but we knew we'd be seeing it again. You know, Chekhov's chainsaw and all that. As if alien butterflies inhabiting humans wasn't weird enough, a talking gorilla charges in to serve as the episode's final boss, and it is wonderfully insane. In one of the season's most shockingly hilarious moments, Economus arrives with the chainsaw and goes to town. Gruesome, over the top, and hard to watch, James Gunn easily tops himself as a master of shock humor with this death. The only one who's not a fan, however, is Vigilante. I had just said how much I wanted to kill someone with a chainsaw like 50 minutes earlier, and then Economos just coincidentally comes in and kills someone with one? I mean, it kind of seems like he was trying to f with me a little. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.